Thank you for joining us on Women in Leadership. My name is Lillian Muli. Statistics indicate that a total of over 1.3 million new employment places need to be created annually to create rather to meet the rising demand for jobs. The challenge is that 70% of jobless people are young persons. Jane Mwangi is the executive director of the KCB Foundation and is a firm believer that the youth hold the key to building a stronger Kenya. She's one of the think tanks behind the Tujia Jiri program launched earlier this year, which is expected to benefit at least 500,000 entrepreneurs in five years, creating at least 2.5 million jobs. Use the hashtag one on one or SMS us using double two four double two four. Your questions to Jane. Many thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you. So, from your profile, Jane, um, we can tell you're passionate about transformational change in the youth. Um, you have served as a think tank for several successful initiatives like Accelerating 21st Century Education with Microsoft and Intel mm -hmm. and at the Ministry of Education. Share with us where this passion for the youth comes from. Why the youth for you? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Lillian, for having me. Uh, my passion for the youth comes from the fact that uh, the youth is so much uh, uh, the future. It's so much the asset that we have as a country. And when you look at them as an asset that we have, if we invest in them, then we'll be able to enjoy the dividend. You know, every time you look at the youth and you look at the energy they have, and you imagine if we could if we could channel this energy into things that uh, would turn out to be you know, productive, then definitely you start seeing that uh, we could do so much with the youth. Mm -hmm. But any time you want to reap something, you must first invest. You know, so the feeling that uh, maybe we have not invested a lot in the youth, and as a result of that, we are forgoing a lot of benefits. Mm -hmm. And so for us as the KCB, uh, we looked at it and we said, supposing we invest in them now, we will be able to harvest. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to earn some dividend from them. And we'll be able you know, to, 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 to just have that energy that they have you know, um, channeled towards some productive activities. And that is so much my passion for the youth. So you're the executive director of the KCB Foundation. Take us a little back um, to your career journey. Where did this all begin? Uh, my career journey all began uh, back in 1985. Um, as a matter of fact, I had just finished my part one of CPA in 1984 uh, at Kimathi Institute of uh, Technology in Nyeri. And uh, after that, fortunately those days, job opportunities were very, you know, um, you know, very many. And I saw USA, you know, advertising for a job and I applied and I got the job. And so I started my career in USA in accounting. Mm -hmm. And over the years, uh, as I did the accounting uh, in USA, working for the US government, I went back to school. I took myself back to school. I did my undergraduate in uh, a BSc accounting and my master's in finance. And after I did my, uh, my finance, I, I decided to quit accounting. And I moved internally within a big organization like USA. It has so many departments. I went into contracting. And contracting, really, I was, a, I was a negotiator for the U.S. government, you know, um, really doing the big procurements. And I did that for a period of about seven years, working so much for countries like uh, South Sudan especially. During the days of John Garan, when we were trying to rebuild uh, South Sudan. And then out of curiosity, I started asking myself, how does all this begin? And I... Seven years did it, I decided, let me move to the next uh, office. And I, once again, internally, I competed for a job, uh, you know, in program development. And I went into programming. You know, no programming of uh, designing the programs. And I started, uh, you know, learning a lot on uh, how all these programs that you see being channeled, you know, uh, rolled out in the country, uh -huh. are all designed. And towards the end of my stay in USA, I focused on PPPs, public-private, you know, partnerships. And there we were looking at uh, how do we leverage on private sector's resources to accelerate development. And it's because we had seen that in the space of development, mm -hmm. there is a very thin line between business and development. And, and, and at the same time, you're seeing a lot of uh, businesses trying to do development work. And so we said, supposing we combined our resources with you know, business and government and development actors, what would happen is that uh, right there, you have more resources, you reach bigger, you know, bigger numbers. Uh -huh. And um, after designing several programs, you know, programs such as the Yali, you know, the, the Young African Leadership Initiative, you know, uh, the one you've just mentioned about accelerating the 21st uh, century education with the, uh, the Microsoft and the likes. You know, I, you know, it reached a point I felt it's time maybe to jump out. Uh -huh. And so I did about 
almost close to you know 29 years so 29 years close to 30 years of my working life I worked for the US government uh -huh. yeah and, and now you're with KCB now I'm with KCB okay so the youth have the greatest ideas but lack support and that's the bulk of the questions that are coming in that there are yeah. no jobs but we lack the support particularly in mentorship and funding how do you um, address this concern uh, we have we have addressed that concern by designing a program we call to Jiri. and to Jiri is where we looked and we say the when we look at the, the youth out there all the time saying they're not jobs and yes indeed when they knock at our doors we too say they're not jobs but looking at them and saying, supposing I help you start up your own job, because really jobs are there. Mm -hmm. You can create your own job. And so we, we put it together and we said, let's start by first killing you. Because if you start your own job without a skill, it's just a matter of time it collapses. You know, you and I know that. And, and we like to say it's the story of a spanner boy who decides to become a mechanic. And it's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. Things goof and he has to quickly shut. It's not sustainable. So into Jiajiri is where we said, fine, as we help them to start their own jobs, as we help them to create their wealth, let's do it in a structured way. And so let's first give them a skill. So in the program stage one is where we give them scholarship. We're giving them scholarship to go back to vocational centers to acquire a skill. Mm -hmm. And we started that in January and we did about uh, we did about 2175 so when you say vocational centers um what 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 skills are we looking at just give us examples okay we are looking at uh, we are we are looking at six areas and we picked on the six areas because we see great opportunities we are looking at beauty and beauty care those are the barbers and the hairdressers you know we are looking at uh, automobile uh, mechanics. Those are the mechanics because they're saying there are so many cars. Right there you have an opportunity to open up garages. You're looking at construction. Whichever way you look at it, there are so many homes and you know, so, so much construction happening in the country. So those are the plumbers, the, the electricians, the masons. Then of course we are looking at agriculture. Mm -hmm. And agriculture because we are saying two thirds of the population live in the rural area. We want to give hope even to the youth in those areas. We are looking at, uh, at uh, IT. IT, we are saying, whichever way you look at it, IT is an enabler. If we therefore come up with, it, you know, if we are able to help them acquire the skill, mm -hmm. they will enable, they will accelerate uh, uh, the others. And then you're looking at domestic. Domestic excites us a lot. Because there you're looking at caterers, you're looking at nannies, you're looking at landscapers. Because all those are opportunities. Mm -hmm. So say if we first give them a skill, how do we then in stage two, help them start up a business along the skill they acquired. How do you accommodate um, the graduates, those who perhaps went back to back uh, from their uh, first degrees to their MBAs and what have you, but have been sitting at home and now need an opportunity with funding for their SMEs or, uh, and what have you, but don't want, to, uh, don't want to be involved in those particular areas? Because we, we do know that there's an attitude problem amongst the youth in this country where they feel some jobs are just not for them. All right, very good question. Let me tell you how we are uh, accommodating uh, the graduates and the, you know, the undergraduates and the graduates. It's where we are saying, as we start the businesses, you know, for, for the ones who've come out of the, the vocational training centers, right there we are saying we can invite the graduates who are seated at home to come and offer their services to these small businesses that we have started. And, and um, we are looking at three graduates especially. We are looking at an accountant, a marketer, and a lawyer. As we speak uh, in the stage two of our program where we have started over 500 small businesses, we have about 55 of those mm -hmm. university graduates. And uh, the accountant is helping the small businesses keep the books of accounts. And, the, and, and it's why we are saying, I do not want the mechanic that we have just uh, you know, helped start a garage become an accountant. They never will be, they are not. That's not their forte. But it's why you're saying, let's have this accountant who's sitting at home, because they're not jobs, come and give the service. Mm -hmm. They're giving the service pro bono, but you're giving them a stipend. The lawyer is helping them get the licenses. And as a matter of fact, I think we have already gotten about, oh, about over 90 licenses for the small businesses. Mm -hmm. The marketer is helping them do the business plan and a business case. And really look at the four P's of any business. Look at the place, the promotion, you know, the pricing and the, and the, and the, the product. Even if it's a garage. And it's why we are saying, let's do these things you know, scientifically. Small as a business may be, 
it will be successful if we apply mm -hmm. the same rules and theories that we, you know, we normally apply in, in other businesses. Mm -hmm. And for us, what is exciting, Lillian, is where when we look at uh, the university graduates that we have engaged, we are telling them, if you do this on these small businesses for a period of 12 months, guess what? By the time you are done, you yourself should not be looking for a job because we have helped you set up your own consultancy. And even if these small businesses will now be giving you 500 shillings each, but guess what? If you're in a place like Kamukunji, serving all those small businesses, there are about 4,000 of them, 500 times 4,000, right there nobody's gonna give you that salary that's the salary of about two million if you form if you put yourselves into a group of a consulting firm that's right yeah. um and i want to take you back as we continue with toji mm -hmm. our education system um what um our schools offer and what the market is looking for and the gap that lies therein because um the people that are obsessed with degree after degree um like i just mentioned but is the market looking for that what have you observed in the market? Let me tell you, it, it, it's very, very unfortunate because uh, we see the contradictions. You know, um, we have put so much emphasis on the degrees. But when you look at the market, the market is actually looking for the skills. You know, these are the, you know, hands-on skills. I, and I'll give a good example. You look at how many engineers we have churned out. But think of the engineer will not work without the artisans underneath them. And that goes to explain why it takes a very long time to turn around a building. You know, from the day you approve everything to have it happen, it takes a very long time because even if the engineer is there, he needs to be supported by technicians. Uh -huh. He needs to be supported by artisans. And so you see that mismatch. But uh, to the young people, what I normally like to tell them is that opportunity lies in that you know that level even if you're a technician because you will you can grow yourself to the next level mm -hmm. let's talk yeah. about the existing SMEs um, you know improving the management and performance of these uh, because there are those who feel that um, there's a gap in access to markets that the ideas are there that you have this brilliant idea but the market is just not there so is there room um, from from the KCB foundation to improve uh, the management of existing SMEs uh, yes, there is room. And, uh, and the way we have designed to GIG, we have made it end to end. So stage one, we skill you. That's why we give you a new scholarship to go to, to school, acquire a skill. Stage two, we incubate you for 12 months. Stage three is where we also link you up to the market. And why we are also linking you up to the market is because we are saying really when you think about it, we have those relationships. All we are doing is to use the, you know, the convenient power. To, to link you know uh, to, to to link you with the market and I, I'll give you a good example you've probably seen as a signing you know MOUs with people like Taskies mm -hmm. why because we have the relationship with Taskies we we know what Taskies is looking for so as we train the skills then we are able to make that connection and so really the message to the SMEs is that um, you know it, it's not a situation of desperation it is not that bad because all those opportunities still exist and when you go to a place like uh, and Gong Road you know you have all those artisans that are there next to them you have a, you know you have people like uh, Nakumat mm -hmm. when you walk into Nakumat and you ask Nakumat why wouldn't you give these guys an opportunity to supply to you oftentimes they will be telling you yes we could but guess what I'm Nakumat I'm looking for big numbers mm -hmm. but these guys are not able to produce sure. to me but why are they not able to give me you know what I'm looking for First and foremost, they don't have tools of trade. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, they're probably using very basic rudimentary, you know, gadgets. And so it takes them a very long time mm -hmm. to produce the 2,000 that supermarkets would be, would be requiring. Youth entrepreneurship can build a stronger Kenya economically. And as we close, Jane, I'd like you to tell um, our, our viewers where, how they can access to Jiri. Is there still room for that young person out there who wants a chance to be part of this? Yes, I'd say that uh, there is a chance. Uh, we started the uh, uh, class of 2016. We had about uh, over 2,000 scholarships. We are just about to start uh, you know, making our announcements for class of 2017. And we are very happy that uh, with the power of the partners that uh, we have put together, we have big numbers. And so I would encourage the youth to be on the lookout from next week we'll yeah, be look announcing. Out on social media or social media mm -hmm. print you know we'll be advertising we'll be in the newspapers and we'll be telling them to go to the closest uh, kcb branches to collect the forms and to fill up the forms 
And once they put in the, you know, the application, we will sit, you know, and consider, you know, the numbers that we have. Mm -hmm. And so they, they are opportunities. And now you're parting words to the youth of this country. We're closing now, Jen. Oh, I'll tell the youth uh, not to be, not to despair. No, no, they should not despair. You know, jobs are there. We, you know, jobs are there. They just need to be positive and they need to look at the opportunities and realize that every opportunity is an entry point that can allow them to grow to where they want to go. Yeah. Jen Mwangi, Executive Director, Director, KCB Foundation, talking to us about Tujiajiri. Look out for the latest on Tujiajiri. If you're a budding entrepreneur, that's the place you need to be. Thanks so much for watching Women in Leadership. Wahiga is next for the day's sport.